Hello, welcome to my reaction to Unbiased History, Rome 4, The Conquest of Italy. I just realized that Roman numer numerals are used in the videos about Rome. I don't know if it's connected, in, but whatever. I just had that thought. Um, let's, let's see what con Conquest of Italy consists of. Uh, before we begin, if you want to help out the channel, there is a there's a donation link in the description below. I'm slobbering on my words. It's the second intro I'm trying anyway. Uh, but yeah, there's a donation link in the description below where you can help the channel out or request a video reaction. You can also recommend me a video uh, through the comment section below. Also subscribe to get more low angelo quality content and stuff. I also have like the melody. There we go. Let's check the sound, start talking. You know, whenever I want to feel truly disgusted, I usually take a look at a map of Italy from the 4th century. Gauls to the north, Greeks to the south, and an unholy mix of Etruscans, Umbrians, and Samnites in the middle. Absolutely disgusting. And it is with okay. those fucking Samnites where the wars for Italy's fate would start. They lived in the Apennine Mountains, often raiding the lower plains of Campania and taking cities like Capua. Rome went the extra mile to civilize those savages, but couldn't reach the hill tribes. This disparity was the spark of the first Samnite war. Capua couldn't defend itself, so called in Rome, whom easily broke the Samnites night siege, placing a garrison of plebeian soldiers in the city. Yeah, you saw it coming. Capua eventually yeah. revolted against Rome, and the plebs soldiers took the opportunity to demand higher pay. Now, it wouldn't have been a problem had you not started a Latin rebellion with it. The Romans were forced to stop the war, rushing back home and crushing the Latins near the Vesuvius, using the Samnites as meat shields at that. If you're asking how the Samnites could be dumb enough to accept this, it is because you haven't met one. With peace restored, well, the Romans yeah, began granting yes. citizenships left and right to the Latins, using them to build colonies for their south, even crossing the border with Samnium. They wouldn't stop complaining over it, but the Romans couldn't give two shits about it. And then we have Neapolis, a Greek colony, in case you were wondering why it's such a shit city today. Itching for war, the Samnites placed a garrison yeah. in Neapolis, agitating it to attack the Roman colonies, thus starting the Second Samnite War, getting us to the first Roman hero of today, Quintius Fabius Maximus Rullianus. He led his men to victory in Samnium, while Neapolis fell to Rome and the consuls led the legions further into enemy territory. Getting so wrecked in the war, the Samnites started pleading for peace, and just before the consuls could respond, they were surrounded, stuck within the Apennine Mountains. The Romans tried carving their way through, but the endless hordes were too much. To save their men's oh. lives, the consuls surrendered. The Samnites relished in their deceitful victory, stripping the Romans of their weapons, walking them under the yoke and taking their lands. With such a humiliating defeat, it was time for a change. So far, the Romans had used the phalanx invented by their Trojan ancestors, but it wouldn't do anymore. With the unparalleled intellect of Rome's greatest minds, they substituted the phalanx with the brilliant maniple system. Now, the legions were divided into a 120 men strong maniples, organized sparsely to better navigate rough terrain. In front lay the Hastani, okay. the official plebeian meat shields. At the center, the Principes, where the experienced patricians put up the real weapons. Did I miss it? And behind were the veteran. Did I miss it? How many were before in each platoon? Or in each square? the center, the Principes, where the experienced patricians put up the real effort, and behind were the veteran Triari. The elite alpha males used only when truly needed. Now, back in the mm -hmm. war, the Romans were attacked by the Etruscans, whom were promptly obliterated by Rulianus. The Samnites in turn were all kicked out of Campania, suing for peace. Real this time. Victorious once more, the Romans cemented their victory by building the Appian Way, a road oh. that led to Rome, the first of many. But success does breed jealousy, lots of it, equally shared by the Samnites, Etruscans... So it's first time when the are kind of properly expanding and connecting uh, two big cities in a big way. Interesting. Yeah. Umbrians and Gauls, all uniting in a coalition to make Rome burn again. Eye. Camillus might not have been around Cyclops anymore, but you know who was? Asses. Cornelius Scipio Barbatus, the first of many as well. Admittedly, this one didn't do too much. Him and Fulvius did kill some barbarians, but it's the next year's consuls who get the real fame. Back to Flavius Maximus Rullianus and his friend Publius Decius Mus. Rullianus did his specialty, devastating the Etruscans, while Decius did the same with Samnium. The war culminated yeah. in the Battle of Sentinum, where Decius and Fabius led the legions against the barbarians 
Iron Coalition. The Romans charged furiously at the enemy, barely using their pricking pace. There. As the battle raged, the left flank began to waver against the ceaseless Gallic spam of chariots, being too cowardly to actually fight on the field. Seeing the danger, Decius led a suicidal charge against them, sacrificing himself to buy time. Given the opportunity, Fabius sent half of the Triadi to save the left flank, and the other half to rout the Samnites. As they fled the field and the Romans set pursuit, Fabius sent the Triadi to surround the Gauls, slaughtering them all, retribution for the sack of Rome, which will only okay. be fully avenged in the centuries to come. Oh, how I wait. Triumphant a third time, Rome annexed all of central Italy, now oh. the master of the peninsula, God with two exceptions, damn. those being the Gauls up north, whose time will come, and the Greeks down south in Magna Grecia. The resulting few years okay. of peace ended soon after, for while Rome was mediating a dispute in a Greek city with their navy, Tarentum completely chimped out and attacked them, over some ancient maritime treaty or some bullshit excuse. Surely, the Greeks okay. in Tarentum weren't stupid enough to deny paying the reparations, right? If you're asking that, it's because you don't know one. Sure enough, war it was, and Tarentum immediately pleaded for help from mainland Greece. Now, I won't waste your time with the utterly insane shit-flinging mess that was Greek politics by then. Safe to say, there was a kingdom called the Pyrus, led by a Greek king named Pyrus. He had 20,000 okay. Greeks, 20 Indian war elephants, and nothing to fucking do. So when he heard Tarentum bitching, off he went to Italy. The tricky thing is, is that Pyrus's army was all equipped with top-notch equipment that they looted from Trojan ruins, managing to put up a fight with Rome at Heraclea. But once they started to lose, off went Pyrus, spamming his elephants until forcing a victory. Yeah, Jesus. victory. The kind where you suffer massive casualties and can only win by spamming living tanks in a battle. Call it a Pyrrhic victory. Pyr well, victory is a victory, you know? Kind of like when USSR, the World War II where USSR technically won against the Germans when they were invading, but ca much more casualties were on the uh, USSR side, so it's still a victory. Yeah, there were no elephants, but still, there were not living tanks. Paris did live to his Greek genes though, sacking and genociding every shred of civilization he could on his way to Rome. He took one good look at the serving walls and fucked off to Ascalon, where he met with the Romans again. He was about to lose, but then spammed his elephants and forced a retreat. At least he admitted this time that one more such victory and they were fucked. Maybe that's why he decided to fuck off to Sicily, no one really knows. Killing Greeks was simply much easier, I suppose. He did fight Carthage while over there, but I'll save my hatred towards them for the next video. <sighs> Once done in Sicily, right. Paris decided to sack an Italian temple of Proserpina, Persephone, in barbarian speech, sending the ship with the loot home, only for Jupiter to bolt it. Some divine justice at last. After everything that happened, Pyrrhus actually returned to Italy. Maybe he was hoping to force another victory. I'm sorry, victory. But his cheese strats were already figured out, getting kicked out back to Greece. Victorious, uh, what, fourth? Fifth time? Yeah, the Latin word counts. A fifth time, Rome annexed the Greek lands of Magna Grecia, now bringing hey. civilization to almost all of Italy. Quite a bloody chapter in Roman history, but you've seen nothing yet. For the next time, we will cover insult. the Punic Wars, where Dido's curse goes into full effect. I'll see you then, plebs. Ciao, ciao. All right. This was a big uh, conquering of Italy. Just in a six minutes time. Did Romans are fast. Unbelievably fast. Kill yourself. Endless nines of likes. That's a good comment. Anyway. Uh yeah. I'm gonna do this these videos until people stop watching them, so as long as People keep watching, more would come out every few days or maybe every week. Depends on the views. When it reaches my artificially made. What? Gouge? Limit? No. I, 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 a line. I don't know. Number of views. Whatever. Fuck me. Goodbye. Nope, that's the end. Uh, thank you. I'm not myself today, I'm sorry. Just feel a bit weird, like I'm too tired. Uh, thank you, anybody who watched this. I appreciate it a lot, and I hope to see you next time. Subscribe to make that next time more happening. Goodbye. Have a great life, because one of us has to.